is Muhammad. Are you ready to pitch or present? Yeah, hi. I'm just sharing my screen. Amazing. Um, can you see my screen? Yeah, it shows up. So hi, ladies and gentlemen, very nice to meet you. Today I presented our proposal. It's called Control Code, Integrating Diversity into Coding, the aim of the project. So basically the idea is they are like population of the people in the world is nearly up to 8 billion people. And most of those people like don't speak English and programming languages are all provided in English and so on. And every day the most the biggest libraries ever are being updated and so on and the documentation have been handling new libraries new functions and already many of the old functions get deprecated and so on and for many of the users um who are from countries those does not speak english they they have some kind of barrier into tapping into the new uh into the new uh into into keeping up with the updated programming languages and so on. And I knew this because I was growing up in Sudan and there we speak Arabic. And I remember my journey when I started learning programming, I started with uh, reading Arabic books, those uh, explain the codings in Arabic and so on. And I remember my friends and I and those journey. And when I then have contact with different people, I realized, okay, oh, most of people need to find tools and books to explain the code in their native languages, uh, especially in the very beginning stages. And now every day we have new, every day now we have new, we have updates to the libraries and so on. Then this came idea, okay, they are large language models. We can build a platform and this platform, we can allow people to extract whatever code they want. They can go to the platform, divide the programming language they want to they wanna extract, and then also define, decide which, and after they decide the programming language they want, they go and decide, okay, the level, the forks, the stars, and so on. And then we have, in the back end, we have a large language models and so on. And we parse, we parse the programming language into their preferred language, like English, Chinese, Spanish, or so on. And then give explanation to each code part. And at the end of the day, they have the English code. They have the code into their languages. Also explain, parse, they know all the information and they have all the all updated information. and. Depending on the user's interaction, we can make tutorials from the most asked questions be between the users. And then, as you can see, even if you go and use ChatGPT, you can ask ChatGPT, what do you know about Pift code most updated in version 2024? And it has a cap. And if you want to learn something new, you have to go to the documentation, bring the code there here, and um, ask him to explain everything alone. And it'll be like inconvenient to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But in our platform, we are gonna give give the people a gonna give the people a tool. In this tool, they decide which programming language they want to learn. The tool will uh, ethically collect all the costs, respecting all the license because they are called their causes are dependent to patent and license and so on. And their causes are free. And then give the people explanation, which be very ideal for scientific experiments and provide a modular open source API for flexibility and help in research collaboration as researchers from different languages, different countries can collaborate together. And then came the singularity in it. They have in the vision of the decentralization. We've, we believe that our project like will help make an advanced AI accessible to all people by reducing compu uh, computation barrier and language barrier as well, open source contribution, the code will be open source, the platform will be open source, it will be installed and deployed into a singularity net. Then you have privacy and security, all the codes will be in singular, based into singularity net. Nobody is gonna know your interactions with the platform except a few. And we only gonna collect metadata to understand the most requested stuff and can be worked out into next, pro next phase into which we can build, okay, like kind of, um, tutorials and so on for the most asking stuff and then you have more collaboration 
and make it make the platform easier to use by people. And this is innovation expansions as well. So the teams, there are three people, Mukhtar, Ammar, and I, um, all studying, doing masters in artificial intelligence and data science and have diversified skills from machine learning to deployment, as well as work, uh, good work in the discourse relation and parsing and also into language modeling with code generation and understanding. And the impact of the existing models, they are, we already have developed some models for the code uh, generation and they, are, they have been downloaded given that um, downloaded by the community and <clears throat> we believe that we can tune our code to this new task here and provide a platform that help people to integrate together and collaborate for for the, the for the better common use and the milestone will be divided into six main uh, six main stages building the platform to collect the code then we have a natural language explanation for each code we are using going to use open source codes and tune them for code explanation in the different languages and then you have the parsing in which we're going to parse the languages from the english into the, the other languages and then we're going to do deployment in which we're going to um, collect all the three main steps together and deploy it and then you have the on onboarding of course the uh, interpreters and the compilers are designed to work with english code but at the end we have the English code, we have the code into the other languages with the explanation with, with every stuff parsed and then parsed for the main function. And then the user can compare the code and learn from it faster. So basically that's our code. And yeah, if any question, please feel free to, to ask. Ubiyo, go ahead. Okay, yeah, thank you so much. Um, wonderful project here, I must say. Um, uh, I just want to see um uh, so in your in your um presentation, you made reference to um some academic paper that you've worked on on something similar, and you also uh, have um a similar repository on hugging face. I would like to have um to go see it and um probably see either the theories around all of these and how this works in essence. Uh, so, so yeah, that's what I would ask the first question. Uh, maybe it's a question or not, I don't know how you see that. But the second is, um, uh, how many languages does this cover? Because it seems like uh, we are talking more of Arabic and English. And um, I don't know if um, that's um, uh, that's the only languages it covers. And uh what what are the languages does it cover i also want to ask maybe in future what are the um other plans for inclusion that um, that does not only pertain to language difference but inclusion in terms of um accessibility and all this other stuff for like maybe people that are visually impaired and other um, and other stuff and other other forms of of um the democratization of coding that would be relevant um, how do you see the future of this as well? Thank you. Good. Thank you. That's a very good question. So basically, um, our project is not like only for English and Arabic. I just give an example, but mainly work for Chinese, Spanish, or whatever. Because we, we, in the end of the day, we have to define a set of languages. We aim to start by Chinese, Spanish, and Arabic, because those are like Chinese most, very many people speak Chinese, and Spanish, like second most popular languages and then Arabic, for example. And then we kind of work and tune those codes because we're still not in the point where we have artificial intelligence and tune the tune the project, uh, tune the platform to work for those three languages. And then you have all the explanation in all of them. Regarding the include, uh, regarding our experience, our past experience was into taking the LLMs and taking um, and modify them, like very parameter efficient tuning to achieve good results because they are very huge model foundational models and now people start to say okay scale is all you need take very huge model and use it this makes sense because huge models have a very strong non-linearity relationship but it's very costly it takes time for reference it takes time for deployment our experience is into taking smaller models and tune these smaller models to fit for the for 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 other tasks with a good with a with a good accuracy with a good precision and so on 
and that's um this is what we presented in the uh, this is what I was presenting like uh, the impact of the existing models and so on. And um, regarding the uh, regarding the the uh, de monetization and so on, yeah, of course we are gonna we are interested into making everything open source and align with the vision of single internet and so on. And as I mentioned, we always in the next step like we're gonna make monitor the interaction with the platform and then see what we can make more like provide tutorials okay onto the rank uh, into a specific kind of language make build them already make them on of the shelf for different uh different programming languages and different stuff then people can came and find that the platform you you experience easier and they are more interested into going and using the platform and they are now have um trust in it and more inclusive need to inclusive and can go ahead together. Um, if I forget to answer one of the uh, question, please feel free to remind me. I will. Have, yeah, uh, no, no problem. I, um, so, I do, how do I get access to your uh, literature review that you've like done? Literature, prior to literature in terms of publications or literature in terms of um, yeah, any 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 format because you said here that you've done extensive literature review on AI democratization. And efficient training of LLMs. I think it's extremely yeah, you can, important. You can, go, you, can go, you can go to this table directly in Hugging Face. These models are already there in Hugging Face. Yeah, you like, can, can you share a link? That's what I mean. Ah, good. I can share a link. Easy. All right, thank you. Just a reminder that we're well above the time limit <laughs> for that one. Good. Um, we have two more questions. Uh, Rojo, is it a quick one? Yeah, yeah. Quick question. Uh, I I was wondering, like, if um, if there was like a plan to maybe do some simple implementation, like uh, where like maybe it could be used by a wide public, something like a Google Chrome extension or um, I don't know, like a Gitbook extension, whatever, something that will make it really accessible so that people use it. Um, have you have you thought about that? Um. So basically, for the beginning, we 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 more focus on to build on a platform, a, a separate platform. But we can take this into consideration for first ex, first uh, improvement of the code and further improvement of the experience. The idea of building a platform in the beginning because we need to deploy different component stuff together, and this is the first time to for us to do this. We can have more control once the project is good. Once we sure about the quality, we can go ahead and give uh, and build like a um, build the plugins. And then people can go and use it instead of going and rushing for a plugin without ensuring the uh, the, um, the quality. And then people have a bad experience about it at the beginning. But yeah, for sure, anything that makes user experience good, we are really interested in any kind of feedback for that. Then we can work it out and you can add it to the future steps that can be uh, can be added to the project. And thank you very much for this insightful comment. Thank you so much, Mohammed.